final class of enzymes, we will be looking at some specific examples and some specific problems related to the topic. We have been studying enzyme kinetics, enzyme mechanisms, different enzyme classes, and then enzyme inhibition. Today, we will be looking at these topics again, just to reiterate the specific ideas related to enzymes and their extreme importance in considering that we have our enzyme substrate complex, we have our active site, our allosteric site, and the formation of products and the fact that they will they are used for targeted drug design. We also discussed enzyme kinetics related to single substrate and bisubstrate systems, Michaelis Menten kinetics, the Lime Weaver Bird plot, and several mechanisms of specific types of enzymes. If we look at an example of enzyme action and regulation. A very beautiful example is that of hexokinase and glucokinase. They conduct the same reaction, but their properties are different. Hexokinase, for example, is found in the brain and in skeletal muscle and is a regulatory enzyme, a topic that we cover, that this enzyme is inhibited by high concentrations of its product like we saw in feedback inhibition. Glucokinase, on the other hand, is found in the liver and is absent in the brain and muscle, and it is involved in glycogenesis when there are elevated levels in glucose. So let us look at the way of their operation to understand how we can look at a specific V0 by S curve, a Michaelis uh, Menten kinetics curve, and see how we can understand the regulation related to levels of glucose. So this is the hexokinase plot and this is the glucokinase plot. This is, as mentioned before, the hexokinase is found in the brain and glucokinase in the liver. And the normal blood level concentration is as indicated. We have the two KM values associated with this protein. And hexokinase is found to have a higher affinity for glucose because of its uh, KM value here, considering that of glucokinase being non-regulatory, this has a lower affinity for glucose, which is also apparent from the enzyme kinetics plot that we can see. Now, the normal blood level concentration falls in between these two levels of KM. Now, when we have normal blood glucose, hexokinase is therefore operating at near Vmax because this is the value and this ensures that the brain gets an ample supply of glucose. However, glucokinase is operating far below its Vmax under these conditions as is apparent from these values here where here is the value of the normal and normal glucose level and that is the Vmax of glucose. However, when the blood glucose level rises, then if there is a rise in the blood glucose level, now the concentration of blood glucose level will be this, but hexokinase is already near its Vmax. So it cannot speed up as much. However, glucokinase can speed up dramatically. As a result of which, the excess blood glucose level will be taken up by the liver and converted to glycogen and fat. However, if the blood glucose falls below normal, hexokinase, if it falls below normal, hexokinase is still operating near its Vmax because it, this is where it would be around this region, while glucokinase is essentially inactive. So in this way, a steady supply of glucose is ensured at the brain, at the brain in all times. So this is a fascinating way in which levels are controlled by the action of these two very similar enzymes that actually work on the same reaction. If we revisit our topics on enzyme kinetics, we have the steady state approximation idea that the concentration of the intermediate, that is our enzyme substrate complex, remains constant through, during the major part of the reaction. And we have the expression where DES, DT, 
that means this concentration of es does not change in time and where can we apply this this can be applied indicating that the in the intermediate has a rapid decay path to form the enzyme and the product when we now look at the double reciprocal plot or the line weaver berg plot we have the 1 by v0 versus the 1 by s that is our concentration of reciprocal of the concentration of the substrate we realize from the enzyme michaelis menten normal curve which gives us a curve like this it was difficult to determine the v max value where the v was plotted against the s it was difficult to determine the v max value or the km value for that matter so the double reciprocal plot the line we were work plot is plotted in this case to give us our y intercept and our x intercept that gives us the value for the v max the reciprocal of the v max and the minus 1 by km value so we also discuss the turnover number as to how efficient the enzyme is and this is the number of substrate molecules that are converted to product in a given unit of time on a single enzyme molecule when the enzyme is saturated with the substrate so in the michaelis menten equation we have k cat which is v max divided by the total enzyme concentration considering that the substrate is has occupied all active sites on the enzyme available to it so we have an equation where we have the modification of the michaelis menten equation where our v max is now replaced by k cat into et and we can determine the value of k cat so this is a first order rate constant determining where we have our enzyme kinetics or the number of the conversion rather of the substrate to the product when we looked at several inhibitor models now we had specific kinetics and specific equilibria associated with the presence of the inhibitors where we looked at constants related to an inhibition constant and then the alpha ki and the alpha ks values and the beta values which we discussed were related related to the types of enzyme inhibition models that we had so whether it was the enzyme forming the enzyme inhibitor complex or the formation of the ternary complex it was important to realize how the enzyme could act on the substrate to be converted to its product so this was the specific kinetics that we looked at in terms of an understanding where we had no inhibitor a competitive inhibitor that would reach the vmax that would be expected and the non competitive inhibitor that could not reach the vmax because some of the sites of the enzyme were occupied or the allosteric sites were occupied rendering the enzyme inactive or unable to bind to the substrate then if we look at a, a just a line weaver berg plot of all the types of inhibitors this is one where we have no inhibitor the one with the competitive inhibitor would have the same vmax value we know that this corresponds to 1 by vmax and the non competitive inhibitor would have the same km value and a non competitive inhibitor would be parallel to that of the one with no inhibitor so this summarizes all the plots that are available for the inhibitors and the uninhibited enzyme now if we look at alternate methods to determine these parameters there are other plots that are available one is the ed hofstede plot where the reaction rate is plotted as a function of the ratio between the rate and the substrate concentration where we can get an identification of the km and the vmax values which is what our intention is when we look at an enzyme kinetics reaction and the dixon plot where 1 by v is plotted as a function of the inhibitor concentration and this is generally used to find out the inhibition constant of inhibitors so if we look at just this is these very briefly the ed hofstede plot is a linear plotting method where we have the specific reaction kinetics 
expression given by this and we have a plot and from this plot we can find out what our the slope corresponds to minus k we can see if we plot v versus v by s we have the minus k m value for the slope and we have the intercept as v max so this gives us an idea about the ed hofstede plot and a rapid identification of km and vmax is possible in the dixon plot where we plot the 1 by v versus the function of the inhibitor concentration we can determine the ki value by measuring the initial velocity of the reaction as a function of the inhibitor concentration but we have to have two or more fixed concentrations of the substrate in this case we have the initial velocity in the presence of the inhibitor this is where we can know use the inhibitor concentration and the ki value that needs to be determined so for competitive inhibitors when we have the initial velocity in the presence of the inhibitor we have the specific expressions associated with this and the specific plots associated with the dixon plot that where we have the plot of 1 by v as a function of i for the different substrate concentrations and the plot is such that the point of intersection actually gives us our ki value so we have the two substrate concentrations and we have the ki value the minus ki value given by the point of intersection to determine the ki value of the competitive inhibitor in this case this is our dixon plot similarly we can get a secondary plot of the ki as a function of the inhibitor concentration and determine an apparent km value for the other inhibitor types for the non competitive inhibitor types similar plots can also be made and we know that we have a modification in the the we have the ki and we have the alpha ki value for this case the has to be several plots two secondary plots rather that must be constructed to determine these values so the idea is similar where we are looking at uh, the same expressions modified because of the presence of the inhibitors because now we have the specific types of inhibitors and the specific types of kinetic expressions the kinetic parameters that are going to change and the equilibria that are going to change because of the presence of these inhibitors so while we monitor the inhibitor the substrate concentration and the inhibitor concentration we can work around these to find out what the inhibition constants are depending upon the type of inhibitor that we have so we have the different types of plots where we have one by v max versus i in this particular case where we can get the value of alpha then the slopes of the double reciprocal lines that is a line weaver bird plot can also be plotted and from the x intercept we can get minus ki so an understanding of the enzyme kinetic parameters in terms of the dixon plot gives us a similar idea modifications related to the algebraic expressions for the michaelis menten kinetics using the reciprocal forms like we do for the line weaver bird plot and based on that looking at the specific plots and determining what the x intercept and the y intercept can give so these kinetic examples give us a specific way to determine to compare different inhibitors from the specific ki values the km values and the vmax values we will now look at some so this is the saturated conditions where we can find again the alpha ki directly from the x intercept of a dixon plot where we looked at in the case of non competitive inhibition if we now look at some sample problems related to the topics that have been covered so far we will be looking at examples where we have the substrate concentration given and the velocities given for different types of examples so if we have an example where we have the penicillin hydrolysis by penicillase the protein that is the beta lactamase the amount hydrolyzed in 1 minute in a 10 ml solution that contains this amount of the protein it was measured as a function of the penicillin concentration the penicillin being the substrate 
So we have the substrate concentration and we have the amount hydrolyzed in one minute that gives us an idea of the extent of the reaction. So the question here is or the requirements here is are to plot V0 versus S and again 1, V0 versus, 1 by V0 versus 1 by S in a line weaver Berg plot for the data and from that to determine the Km and the Vmax values and also from the expressions of from the information given to find out the turnover number. So this is our V0 versus S plot from the data that have been provided and the 1 by V0 versus 1 by S that gives us an indication of the line weaver Berg plot. And we know that this the point of intercept, the intercept here, the point of intersection here is going to give us our 1 by V max value and this is going to give us our minus 1 by km value. So based on this, we can get the information related to the km value and the Vmax value. Now there we had the Vmax value and from the Vmax value that we got from the previous expressions or the previous plots, we know that we started off with 10 to the minus 9 grams of enzyme. The molecular weight has been given to us. So it is possible to determine the number of moles in the reaction for the specific enzyme. We have a substrate conversion rate that is given by 6.8 into 10 to the minus 10. So if this is the substrate conversion rate and this is the number of moles available and the uh, problem said that this was the conversion for one minute, so we have our turnover number because we know that the definition of the turnover number is the number of substrate molecules that are converted into product by the enzyme molecule in unit time when the enzyme is fully saturated with the substrate. So this gives us an idea of how to determine the Km and the Vmax values and the turnover number from a series of, uh, a series of values for the substrate concentration and the specific amount hydrolyzed in this case. If we look at a velocity reaction or a substrate concentration similar to what we saw previously, so just a table where we have the V0 values and the substrate concentration and we need to calculate the Km and the Vmax in a similar problem. We know we have to determine the 1 by S and the 1 by V0 and basically plot this in a line weaver Berg plot the reciprocal plot and from that we can get the intercept and we can get the slope that is the Km by the Vmax and we can also determine the Km from this value here. So this gives us an idea of how to approach these problems where we have a series of michaelis menten kinetic experiments conducted. We find out the V0 each of these experiments for the different substrate concentrations look at the double reciprocal plot to determine the Vmax and the Km values. So from this, y is equal to mx plus b, we can also get the equation of the line and from that we can also determine the Vmax value and also the Km value. So this is how we can determine the Km value and or from the x-intercept, we can also get this value from the equation that we have and we see that the values are very close to each other. So from the x-intercept, that is the minus 1 by km from the plot or from the slope that we can get the similar values of the km that is required for this particular problem. In another problem, if we look at the following assay that was set up, to study the kinetics of an enzyme carboxypeptidase A. So there were two tripeptides as has been given here, ala ala phenylalanine and ala ala leu. These are the substrates for the enzyme and the enzyme reaction is known to follow michaelis menten kinetics. The concentration of the enzyme is given as 10 to the minus 4 millimolar. The Km values are already provided. One is 5 millimolar and one is 10 millimolar for the two tripeptides provided. So we have our enzyme carboxypeptidase A. This is working on the two tripeptides, an ala ala phenylalanine and an ala ala leucine. And what we want to know is we have to 
find out which peptide has a higher affinity for carboxypeptidase A. So, what we have is we have the two values of Km. So, the next question is if the Vmax is given as 1 millimolar per minute, what is the turnover number and the apparent second order rate constant of this particular reaction of this particular enzyme experiment. So, the first question is which peptide has a higher affinity? So, an equation where we have a low Km value indicates a higher binding affinity as the reaction is going to approach our Vmax faster. So, in that case, we have the Km values that were given as 5 millimolar and 10 millimolar for the two tripeptide substrates. So, we can definitely say that the answer is ala ala fe because in this case, we have a lower Km value compared to the ala ala lu tripeptide. In the second question, if the Vmax for the particular tripeptide is 1 millimole per minute, we want to know what the turnover number is. What do we need for that is we need the Kcat value. We actually need in that case the total concentration of the enzyme which was given as 10 to the minus for millimolar. So, the total concentration of the enzyme and we have the Vmax value provided to us and we need to keep our units correct. So, this is 10 to the 4 per minute is the turnover number. And the apparent second order rate constant that is given by Kcat by Km that is given. So, this is the Km value of the second tripeptide that we were looking at and that is this ala ala leucine and the Kcat is something we calculated from a knowledge of the Vmax and the knowledge of the total enzyme available to us and from that we can determine what the second order rate constant is. Now if we want to know the expressions for the rate of change of ES that is the DES DT as a function of E, S, ES, K1, K minus 1, and K2. So, K, the small Ks indicate rate constants of the specific reactions that are involved. So, we have our overall kinetic mechanism given in this case, where we have a pre equilibrium step and we have a final product formation step. So, if we want to apply the steady state approximation as we looked at, we have our expression related to the change of the enzyme substrate concentration with time. So, the formation of the enzyme substrate complex is from K1, from the pr product of the concentrations of E and S, it is disintegrated by the reverse of this reaction in its concentration and also in the formation of the products. So, this is going to give us the expression for the rate of change of the enzyme substrate concentration with time. And given if we know we can monitor this, then we can find out the specific rate constants or as we looked at the overall expressions for the enzyme kinetics or the Michael is meant in kinetics, we can find out the specific values for the Km also. In another expression now, if we want to find out the expression for the rate of product formation, that is DPDT, from, we know from our previous expression that is, it is going to be just K2 into the enzyme sub enzyme substrate com complex because that is where or where from the product is going to appear. So, we want to know which expression is set to zero under steady state approximation. Is it DES DT or DPDT? Now, we know that the steady state approximation tells us that any intermediate concentration will remain as zero because we want the intermediate formation and the intermediate disintegration has a constant rate. So, the rate of formation is going to be the rate of disintegration. So, this is set unto zero under the steady state approximation. If we now look at some enzyme kinetics and inhibition problems, 
We have the enzyme kinetics for an enzyme E in the presence of 10 millimolar inhibitors A and B. And from a plot, we have to determine the type of inhibitors that they are. And from the plot, we, can, we have to see whether we can determine the Vmax and the Kn value for each type. So given that this is our plot, we have on the y-axis the 1 by V0 and the 1 by S on the x-axis. And we realize that this is our line weaver birth plot. And from the type, so we look at the points of intersection here and here. And from that, we can determine that A is a competitive type, B is a non-competitive type. And given the values of that are given in the y and the x-axis, we can determine the value of the Vmax and the K. We look now at a specific example again, where we have two inhibitors, A and B, that have been developed for a specific enzyme. They have been synthesized and tested, and we have the data associated with 5 millimolar of A and 0.1 millimolar of B, and we have these are the various velocities associated where we do not have any inhibitor. So without the inhibitor, so this is the uninhibited enzyme at the several substrate concentrations that are given in the first column. And the specific kinetics associated with, that is the nanomoles per minute for the V, for the different inhibitors A and B. So we want to know the values of the KM and the Vmax for the uninhibited enzyme and the types of inhibitors of A and B and the Ki constants in this case as well. And to determine which one is the better inhibitor of the enzyme. So if we plot it for the uninhibited enzyme, the line weaver perk plot, that is the double reciprocal plot, we can get the slope that gives us the Km by Vmax that is given because we see that this form is y is equal to mx plus c. We get the c here and we get the vmax value from the expression, the 1 by vmax. That is our y-intercept here since we know that we have. So we can put x equal to 0 to get the y-intercept. We can put our um, value here. We can put y equal to 0 to get our x-intercept, and from that, we can get the Km and the Vmax values. Now, if we want to plot it in the presence of the inhibitor, then we see that with inhibitor A, we have a point of intersection that is given here. So we know that it is a competitive inhibitor. Now, given the values that we have here, we can find that we see that the y-intercept value is the same, which means that the Vmax is the same. And we have the Km for the uninhibited enzyme that is given in blue. In this case, the point of intersection on the x-axis that is without inhibitor. And we can find out the value with inhibitor where we see a modified Km value with the specific inhibitor A in this case. So similarly, if we do it for the inhibitor B, we find out that we have a varying Vmax because but the Km is the same, the point of intersection now is on the x-axis. So Km without inhibitor is 2.9 millimeter uh, millimolar and K prime M with the inhibitor B is 2.9 millimeter. So what do we say? We know that we have a point of intersection on the x-axis indicating that B is a non-competitive inhibitor. Now, if we want to find out the specific values of the Ki, the way to determine that is the information that we need is the Vmax value, the Km for the uninhibited enzyme, and the K'm prime in the presence of the inhibitor. The ratio of this is going to give us our alpha value. And from a concentration, we know that the alpha is the variation. in So the alpha Km that we see here is the modified Km. So from an idea of the concentration of the inhibitor, we can actually determine the value of our, we can determine the value of our Ki. So we have the inhibitor concentration at 5 millimolar and the Ki value at 9.09 .09 millimolar from the values that we have determined. 
Similarly, if you want to find the Ki value of inhibitor B, again, we have the Vmax value and the modified Vmax value. In this case, the Km values are the same because we know that B is a non-competitive inhibitor. We get a variation in the alpha values that is going to also give us the 1 plus the concentration of the inhibitor by Ki. So the variation is going to be the alpha because we have a modified Vmax in this case. So the Ki of B is 0.24 millimolar. So now if we look at both the values, we have the KIB value, that's the inhibition, inhibition constant for B, that was less than that. The one was, one was 0.24 and the previous one was 9.09. So we see that we have in this case a better inhibitor in case of B because we have a lower inhibition constant, a tighter binding complex. So inhibitor B is the better inhibitor of the enzyme. So in our discussions of enzymes, we have looked at them as cat catalysts to break specific bonds. They act as we have seen in various manners as cell surface receptors, channel, ion channels, transporters. And for the drug inhibitor design, we can focus on their catalytic mechanism or their structural aspects and determine substrate or structure-based inhibitors, transition state inhibitors, as we look at enzyme-targeted drugs for the development of specific inhibitors for enzymes. This is the end of module 7 that dealt with enzymes, enzyme mechanisms, enzyme kinetics, and enzyme inhibition. These are the references that we have followed.